What's going on guys, JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City video. Today we are going to be starting our daily Manchester City transfer updates throughout all of the summer transfer window. So if you're enjoying the content, make sure you help support my channel and subscribe. Press that red button, press the bell and put your push notifications on. I am aiming for 9,000 subscribers at the time of recording this video. We are now less than 500 subscribers away so any help towards that would be much appreciated. Don't forget also you can find my social media links in the description below and popping up on screen if you want to go and follow me on my twitter and instagram don't forget also email in the description below too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships for any videos or any general business inquiries leave a thumbs up if you enjoy this video we've been smashing past 500 likes on my last five videos which is insane so we're aiming for 500 likes on this video any help to us that would be much appreciated and don't forget also leave your thoughts in the comments below as i'm always interested in what you do have to say and so Daily transfer updates, they're back. The summer transfer window is now indeed open for Premier League clubs and the rest of the clubs in England for them to sign players. So City now can sell and sign players as they wish. So we're going to start off with the outs first. We're going to speak about uh, Fiseo Delibashiru, who we haven't spoken about in a couple of weeks. We've had more of a development. It's coming from the Sheffield Star, who are saying that Sheffield Wednesday are now close to signing Deli Bashiru. He is going to have a medical today at Sheffield Wednesday. He's close to agreeing personal terms. They just need that contract signing. All the formalities sorted, and he will become a Sheffield Wednesday player. Now, um, I was in my last update on uh, Delhi Bashiru. I was wondering if it was going to be a loan move or a permanent move. It seems to me at this moment in time that it is going to be a permanent transfer for Delhi Bashiru to join Sheffield Wednesday from Manchester City, nearing and on completion. Delighted for him. It'll be a really good move for him in the championship. So we're going to move on to the ins and we're now going to speak about some players because we've got updates on a couple of players from what happened in the Premier League yesterday. The first, Nathan Ake. Bournemouth have been relegated from the Premier League to the championship, which means now Nathan Ake... Uh, he's going to be wanting to play top-level football. He's going to want to be playing in the Premier League, which, in my opinion now, makes this transfer just that little bit easier now for Manchester City. It looks like a relatively straightforward transfer in the first place. It seems even more relatively straightforward now. I imagine Nathan Ake will want to be playing his trade in the Premier League. So, uh, signing uh, Nathan Ake and um, City being interested, it's more likely going to be a no-brainer for him, of course. Uh, a wonderful passer of the ball. Versatile, can play left-back, can play in defensive midfield as well. Um, makes him a, a, a suitable option for Manchester City. Let's not forget, he's also homegrown. He might not be born in England, but you don't have to be born in England to be homegrown. You just have to be trained in England, which, of course, Nathan Ake is with Chelsea. And as, I'm, as far as I'm aware, it seems Manchester City are taking Ake um, most seriously at this moment in time. And so it's one of them transfers that if City wanted it, they could go and get it done and it wouldn't take too much time. I mean, the fee would be the only thing for City to negotiate with Bournemouth. And so, uh, yeah, it's one of them transfers that if City wants it, they could easily go and get it. But, uh, yeah, like I said, my update now, it's just a little bit more simple for Manchester City. However, Douglas Louise update. City's name has been chucked out there for the Aston Villa man. City have an option to sign him back from Aston Villa. They have stayed up in the Premier League. So I wouldn't imagine now that Manchester City uh, are going to have any more interest in Douglas Louise for at least another 12 months. City wanted Douglas Louise to be playing regular football uh, because he certainly is an option that once Fernandinho leaves Manchester City that would want a new upcoming defensive midfielder and having an option to bring back Douglas Louise, uh, it certainly would be an option for Manchester City. So City will want him to be tested in the top division, basically. And should Villa have been relegated, it wouldn't have surprised me if City had signed Douglas Louise and given him 12 months in and around the first team to see what he can do. But now that means that uh, more than likely Douglas Louise will be staying at Aston Villa. Not got an update on Jack Grealish. Not too sure what's going to happen with him, whether he's going to leave Aston Villa still or not. Uh, I don't know if the, his transfer is going to be impacted regardless of whether they stayed in the Premier League or not. Uh, what I will say is I imagine it will probably take a big offer needed to bring Jack Grealish in. City's name has been put out there. Apparently United are taking it more seriously than City at this moment in time. And Aston Villa having Premier League football, not needing to sell now. Uh, yeah, it's probably going to take a big offer to bring him in. 
And then it leads us on to Ben Chilwell as well. Leicester have missed out on Champions League football for next season. Um, both Manchester City and Chelsea um, will feel more confident now that they could persuade Ben Chilwell to leave Leicester City to join their club because they can offer him Champions League football. He's wanting to make the left-back position for England his own. He's going to want to be playing in the biggest and best competitions. City and Chelsea now for next season can offer that. Leicester though, Brendan Rodgers has said he is not for sale. Leicester will not sell Ben Chilwell this summer. So we'll keep an eye on what's happening with them transfers. On Kaladu Koulibaly. Now there was lots of fake news going round about Kaladu Koulibaly just yesterday on Twitter. Fake profiles have been made saying that an agreement had been put in place for Manchester City uh, and Napoli to sign uh, for Man City to sign Kaladu Koulibaly from Napoli and a deal had been agreed, a fee had been agreed, which we were mentioning 68 million pounds which just wanted to address quickly simply isn't the case we've had no real new update since my last video which is city trying to negotiate a fee uh, they're doing it through koulibaly's agent rather than direct through napoli themselves so Cal Kaladu koulibaly's agent speaking to napoli asking how much do they want he reports back to manchester city man city say to him how much they're willing to pay etc etc and that's how it's rolling at this moment in time so City uh, they're willing to pay as high as around 60 million pound uh, they could probably be stretched towards 65 even 70 million pound they won't go any higher than that Napoli looking for between 80 to 90 million euros so they're looking for a little bit more than 70 million pound I reckon there's somewhere between maybe 10 15 million pound difference between the two clubs uh, which is where those two clubs are struggling to agree a deal uh, Manchester City basically being patient, holding a stalemate, hoping that Napoli will come down in price because they know that Napoli are wanting to sign Oshman from Lille. They're going to be spending a lot of money on him. And so the uh, Kaladu Koulibaly leaving would fund that. So if Napoli end up announcing that, then I know that something's probably in the pipeline for Kaladu Koulibaly. At the moment, Napoli have an agreement in place, but they haven't actually signed Oshman yet. So we're waiting to see what happens there. And I imagine that if Koulibaly is leaving Napoli, then Napoli would first want to have a replacement signed then sell Koulibaly so this is going to be one of those that's going to drag on more than likely for quite a while it's called a saga what a way to start off the JSGC daily Manchester City transfer updates for the summer 2020 window than to have a saga already involved. We've had sagas in previous years when we've been speaking about other transfers. I know that Kevin De Bruyne and Benjamin Mendy took a while to get done. That was a kind of a saga. Of course, we've had Jorginho. Uh, that was a saga that went on all summer and then City ended up not signing him. Uh, we had dealings with Alexis Sanchez that dragged on for quite a while as well. Yeah, yeah we've had quite a few sagas we had last summer Leroy Sane as well that saga and so it seems the theme for this summer is going to be Kaladu Koulibaly potentially joining Manchester City um so yeah we're just waiting to see if there's going to be any more development City will play a patient game here and hope that Napoli do bring that price down and if they do then City may well be willing to uh, meet them halfway if you get where I'm coming from so we've got an update instead on Ferran Torres now goal in Spain were reporting yesterday there was an agreement in place between Valencia and Manchester City for Ferran Torres to join Manchester City. They were speaking that it was a fee between 30 to 40 million euro. Uh, I did write down the details on the transfer. It was a little bit sketchy, so I was wondering about the reliability of this source. Um, and so I did a little bit more digging. Now, goal in Spain added on to the end of that article that they're expecting the transfer to be announced within the next week or so, which would make sense considering City now aren't playing another game until next Friday. And so that's... Uh, We've got a whole, what, nearly two weeks here to try and get a little bit of summer business done. Um, and Ferran Torres being one of them more straightforward transfers for us to get done because we've already got an agreement in place for Ferran Torres to join Manchester City. We've already got agreements with his representatives. It literally just needs a fee agree and then getting the paperwork and medical sorted and then going on from there. Obviously, it's a bit complicated now with quarantine with uh, Spain and the UK. Real Madrid are allowed in on a, on a, a sporting uh, kind of loophole in the agreement, so that might that the Etihad will definitely go ahead. Uh, so I'm not too sure what's going to be happening with transfers. City could probably get all the deals sorted whilst he's in Valencia. If I'm on a send a representative over and then they come back and quarantine, then Ferran Torres just joins up with the Manchester City squad when the when the new season starts and there might be a bit more of a clarification on uh, on um, 
quarantine and what's happening with uh, the pandemic in Spain so uh, we'd have to wait and see anyway goal in England in my digging they said actually a fee is not agreed between Valencia and Manchester City but Manchester City may well be looking to try and get a little bit of transfer business done between uh, now and the Real Madrid game so we're talking roughly around seven to ten days for City to try and get something sorted uh, I know that Chicky's been speaking about transfer saying it's difficult because we've not got as long to complete deals we're going to be competing in the Champions League and if we get to the final then we're not going to be getting anything sorted until past August 23rd and the new season starts on September 12th so it gives us three or four weeks to get all our summer transfer business done so it would make sense while we've got this little gap of just under two weeks to get some summer transfer business done if that means some of the young players leaving out on loan or a couple of the players leaving on a permanent transfer that's not going to be used for next season and City can bring in a player then that would be brilliant but actual first team players leaving that will not happen until after after the Champions League, so Otamendi and Stones, etc. That will not happen until after the Champions League. I see no reason why City cannot bring in players, though, in particular players like Ferran Torres and Nathan Ake. They're simple deals for us to get done. We'll wait and see. Like I said, daily Manchester City transfer updates, so I'll be able to give you an update on this daily. So make sure you subscribe, press that red button, press the bell and put your push notifications on to be notified immediately when I do upload. Don't forget, aiming for 9,000 subscribers, we're less than 500 away, so any help towards that would be much appreciated. Social media links in the description below and popping up on screen if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter and Instagram. Don't forget also, email in the description below too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships for any videos or any general business inquiries. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. We're aiming for 500 likes, so any help towards that would be much appreciated. And don't forget also, leave your thoughts of these transfers in the comments below. And I'll see you all again tomorrow for the next daily Manchester City transfer hub update. I hope everyone is safe and well, and I'll see you all again then for that video. So I've been JSGC. Thank you for watching. Peace. Ciao for now.